Greetings, YouTubers, and welcome to my 33rd TTM video. Today I will show you uh, three purchases that I got in the mail, excuse me, three TTMs I got in the mail this weekend, two purchases, and a card that I'm going to add to my collection that is kind of very special to me for a certain player that I liked. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a video. I was going to do a tour of the Man Cave, but some things came up. Haven't been getting a lot of mail anyway. I don't know why, but got a good mailman. He's a collector as well, so we always talk. He sells things on eBay, and uh, just haven't been getting them in. So, let's get started. The first card that I'm going to add to my personal collection is this card. It's a rookie card of a former Chicago Bear running back. And that's of Mr. Brian Piccolo. Very famous Brian Piccolo of the movie A Brian Song, which starred uh, James Kahn as Brian Piccolo. This card was his rookie card, but you can see, these, see excuse me, they spelled his name wrong on the front, B-R-Y-O-N. And also on the back, they spelled his name wrong, B-R-Y-A-N. So they got his name wrong both times. I like the card. You know, it's got the little bear there growling. Always like that. A little bit about him. Louis Brian Piccolo was born on Halloween, October 31st, 1943, in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. He passed away, sadly, on June 16th, 1970, at the age of 26 in New York City at uh, Sloan Kettering Memorial Hospital. When he was three years old, his family moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where he grew up and played uh, high school football. He only had two scholarship offers in his high, after his high school career had ended. One was at Wichita State in Kansas, and the other was at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. So he chose Wake Forest, played real hard. He led the nation in rushing and scoring during his senior season in 1964, and was also named ACC Player of the Year. In the Heisman uh, Trophy voting that uh, year, John Heward of Notre Dame won the award, Brian finished 10th in the other voting. That was just ahead of a guy from Alabama, a quarterback by the name of Joe Namath, and right behind him, a running back from Kansas by the name of Gail Sayers, a future uh, roommate there and teammate. Uh, one event in 1963 occurred in Winston-Salem at Wake, Wake Forest home game when they were playing the University of Maryland. Maryland had a player by the name of Darrell Hill, who was the only African-American football player in the ACC at the time. Then Maryland assistant coach Lee Corso said that Wake Forest had the worst atmosphere of any campus that Maryland would visit that year. And they were really getting on Hill. So Brian Piccolo walked across over to the Maryland bench and to Brian Hill. And what he did simply was put his arm around Hill. And that silenced the crowd that day uh, in North Carolina. After he graduated from Wake Forest, he try, was undrafted, I should say, by both the NFL and the AFL in 1965, that draft. So he tried out for the Chicago Bears as a free agent. He made the team for the 1965 season, but as part of what was then called the Taxi Squad. Today we'd call it the Practice Squad. And I, and I should say that um, you could practice with the team, but you couldn't dress up for games. In 1966, he made the roster, but played mostly on special teams that year. And he started backing up Gail Sayers in 1967. In 1968, in November, Sayers had a terrific, a horrific, I should say, horrific knee injury. And Brian then had to step in as the team's uh, running back. That was his best year in football in 1968, where he rushed for 450 yards on 123 carries, about 3.7 yards a carry. Scored two touchdowns, had 28 catches for 291 yards, about 10.4 yards of reception. In 1964, he was then moved to fullback. And that year, the uh, Chicago Bears started to pair up players by position, not just because of their color. He and Sayers were in the backfield, so they became roommates, the first integrated uh, roommates in the NFL. In 1969, the Bears were in the midst of their, one of their worst seasons ever. They finished the year one win and 13 losses. The only win came against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It was in a game against Atlanta after Brian had scored a touchdown that he removed himself from the game, which was very unusual. Started raising concerns with his uh, coaches and his teammates. He said breathing had become too difficult. 
He was eventually sent to a doctor and eventually diagnosed with cancer on his lungs. And that would sadly take his life on June 16th, 1970, as I said, at the age of 26. His entire career was spent with the Bears from 1965 to 69, where he rushed for a total of 927 yards, four touchdowns. He had 537 receiving yards and one touchdown. His number 41 is retired by the Chicago Bears, and that's the only Chicago Bear jersey I own is uh, his. Number 41, pick that up. Uh, again, if you haven't seen it, go see uh, or watch Brian's song. It was uh, based off of a chapter in Gail Sayers' book, the book I Am Third. That was a chapter he wrote about. It was about Brian. James Kahn played Brian Piccolo, and uh, Billy D. Williams played Gail Sayers. So, good movie. Check it out. But again, I like this card. Been waiting for it. And bid just right. First, I offered the person... Uh, some money, and they said no. They wanted a lot more. Well, so I decided I'm not going to pay that much, and I bid on it, and eventually won for the price I wanted to, so I was happy with that. This next one is another one of the postcards that I'll add to my Hall of Fame postcard collection, and that is of Hall of Famer Red Shandienst. And Albert Fred Shandienst, known as Red for his color of his hair, was born on February 2, 1923 in Germantown, Illinois. He passed away June 6, 2018 at the age of 95. Fred, uh, me, Red's father was a coal miner in Illinois, and his family as a young boy would live without running water or electricity. In 1939, when he was 16 years old, he dropped out of school to join the Civilian Conservation Corps, the CCC, which was part of Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal program. While he was working on a fence, he suffered a serious injury to his left eye from a nail. Many doctors recommended, well, you got to remove the, uh, the eye. But Red, no, he didn't want to remove it, and he eventually found a, uh, a doctor who was willing to pursue a non-surgical treatment. He would endure constant headaches for years, with his rehabilitation. Uh, after the injury, he always found it very difficult to read breaking balls while he was hitting right-handed against right-handed pitchers. Well, as a young man, he taught himself to hit left-handed. So that, uh, to solve his problem, he wound up hitting left-handed against right-handed pitchers, and those were the skills he acquired as a youth. In his entire career, which was a long baseball career, 1945 to 63, he was inducted into the army, but had to eventually was discharged because he had his eye injury, and he'd suffer some trauma in a, I believe, a bazooka accident, if I'm not mistaken. But he played from 1945 to 63. His career average was 289, 2,449 hits. He had 84 homers and 773 runs batted in. He played with the St. Louis Cardinals on two separate occasions. For that was the bulk of his career. He played for the New York Giants and the Milwaukee Braves. He also was a manager, and a very good one at that. Uh, he managed the St. Louis Cardinals from 1965 to 76, and then again in 1980 and in 1990. His managerial record, 1,041 wins and 955 losses, so he won about 52.2% of his games as a manager. Ten times in his career, though, he was an all-star. Five times he was a world champion. In 1946, with the Cardinals as a player. In 1957, with the Braves as a player. In 1964, as a coach with the Cardinals. In 1967, when he was manager of the Cardinals, when they beat the, uh, the Red Sox. In 1964, they beat the Yankees. And in 1982, he was a coach in Whitey Herzog's staff when they beat the Brewers. He led the National League in stolen bases in 1945. And he's also a member of the Cardinals. Hall of Fame and the Baseball Hall of Fame. So, good uh, addition to the old collection. Put in a uh, best offer, and it was taken. So, nice to add the old redhead there to it. And next, I got uh, purchases of three cards coming to the same player. It's a sleepy purchase, I guess you'd say. And that is a former Georgetown basketball player, Eric. Sleepy Floyd. There's one, two of them in Georgetown, and one with the uh, the Houston Rockets there. 
draw three cards. Get that glare going off there. There we go. <clears throat> Uh, Eric Augustus Floyd, nicknamed Sleepy, was born on March 6, 1960, in Gastonia, North Carolina. He's 60 years old. Got the nickname Sleepy while he was playing baseball in the fourth grade when some spectator yelled out, Get that kid out of the game. He's sleeping. Stuck with him ever since. Uh, played high school basketball. Took his team, Hunter Huss High School, in his junior year to win the 1977 North Carolina state title over rival Ashbrook High School. And they were led by future Hall of Famer James Worthy. Yep, they'd meet again, too, down the line. Uh, Sleepy attended Georgetown University from 1979 to 82. He was one of John Thompson's first biggest gets as far as recruiting a great young high school player to the team. And then came Patrick Ewing in Sleepy's senior year. Uh, in his four years at Georgetown, he led the team in scoring and was captain of the 1981 and 1982 teams. He still holds the Georgetown record for career points with 2,304. He helped Georgetown get to the 1982 NCAA championship game in New Orleans, Louisiana at the Superdome, where they would lose in a tight, tight game to the University of North Carolina. Fred Brown's infamous pass to uh, James Worthy sealed the victory. Who was the MVP of the Final Four? That was, yes, James Worthy. A lot of people say it was Michael Jordan, but Worthy was the guy. In the 1982 NBA draft, he was selected in the first round with the 13th pick by the New Jersey Nets. His NBA career was a pretty good one, from 1982 to 1995. He played uh, with the Nets on two separate occasions, was traded by the Nets to the Golden State Warriors, where he played, then with the Houston Rockets and also the San Antonio Spurs. He finished with 12,260 points, about 12.8 a game. He had uh, about 5.4 assists a game, 5,175 total, and 1,120 steals, about 1.2 a game. In his career, he was a first-team All-American in 1982, two-time first-team uh, All-Big East, was an NBA All-Star in 1987, and is a member of the Georgetown University Athletic Hall of Fame. A little uh, trivia here for you. Eric Sleepy Floyd still holds the NBA playoff record for points scored in a quarter with 29 and in a half, 39. It was Game 4 of the 1987 Western Conference Semifinals against the Los Angeles Lakers. He finished that game with 51 points, and that prevented Golden State from being uh, swept by the Los Angeles Lakers. Of course, the Lakers won the uh, championship that year anyway, but at least they didn't get swept in four. But again, i got three cards I purchased for real good prices. Uh, this one here, the Houston Rockets, and uh, guaranteed by Panini, as they say on the back. And I got this one, another one that says congratulations, right there. I like that because it's a Georgetown uh, uni. Big Georgetown fan back in the day. And there again, another Georgetown one. Nice Sleepy Floyd pickup for the old uh, collection. And now the uh, TTMs I got. This first one came in from Texas. Took about nine days. There was no fee. I sent two cards to this gentleman, and he sent them back signed. And that's Mr. Otto Moore there on the jazz card. And right here on the Rockets card. Now he, I sent two, but then Mr. Moore decided to send back three pictures. He sent this one, which was a picture of his uh, basketball card there. Nice tall one, signed it on the bottom. He also, I guess, got this one off the uh, internet, but uh, what do I care? And that's uh, right there. Signed it for me. Playing the Knicks. Willis Reed right there. We'll slide that on in the back. Move that over. See if we can get him a little better. And then he sent me this picture as well. Of him with the Jazz up against the Washington Bullets. And you got uh, Wes Unseld. Elvin Hayes right there, so you got a bunch of Hall of Famers in here. 
So very nice of Mr. Uh, Mr. Moore to do that. I can get all those in the picture there. Ain't gonna get them all in, but I tried. So that was very nice of him to get those three extras he sent. Otto George Moore, born in August nine, August twenty seventh, nineteen forty six, in Miami, Florida. 74 years old. He played power forward and center in his career. Went to Texas Pan American University, which is now known as the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. In the 1968 NBA draft, he was selected in the first round with the sixth pick by the Detroit Pistons. His basketball career itself went from 1968 to 1980, although he played in the NBA in 19, from 1968 to 76 and then would play in the Philippines, over in Rome, Italy, and in the CBA. He played uh, for the Pistons for a good portion of his career on two separate occasions. The Phoenix Suns, the Houston, excuse me, the Houston Rockets, the Kansas City Omaha Kings, and the New Orleans Jazz. He averaged a double-double twice in his career, once with the Pistons in 1969-70 season, where he averaged 11.9 points and 11.1 rebounds a game, and one for the Rockets in 1972-73 when he averaged 11.7 points and 10.6 uh, rebounds a game. In his career, he scored 5,616 points, averaged about 8.2 a game, 5,575 rebounds, about 8.2 a game, and 1,060 assists, about 1.6. So again, nine days, no fee, he lives in Texas, he was kind enough to sign the first card I sent him, the old Tops card from 1975-76. And this uh, card, first one he was on the uh, New Orleans Jazz, this one on the Houston Rockets from 1972-73. to And then he included this nice photo, him on the Jazz there, a replica of his card. And then he included a couple of photos that he obviously printed out, but... Nice with the Jazz there playing the Bullets. And then when he was on the Pistons playing the Knicks. So, thank you, Mr. Moore. That was very nice. I like the old time basketball players. They do a great job. And next one, second TTM I got. Got this from the U.S. Post Office, the old bag. Obviously, they stamped it on the back, which is really great. Now I wrote, please do not bend on the back, as you can see there. I'll take it out of this envelope now. And I also wrote it on the front as well, but it got torn up. So, big tear. But in it were uh, four cards, I believe I sent. I sent four. I think I sent three. I think he sent an extra one, because I don't know. Yeah, I think he sent an extra one to me. And that is a former Cleveland Indian, and amongst many other teams, Mr. Corey Snyder. Got him on the tops there. Got him on this tops as well. I'm going to put it in the holder. And also, got him on the old scorecard. Sign that one. I think he sent me this one. Now with the White Sox, I don't remember sending them that tops one. So... I only sent three, so yeah. And this is the one I really wanted to get, was his 1984 U.S. Olympic team card. The uh, 85 set there, so. Pretty good returns from Mr. Corey Snyder. James Corey Snyder. It goes by his middle name, Corey. This took uh, 17 days. There was no fee. Came from Utah. I noticed everybody else was getting theirs back, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll get mine, and I did. Sent it out probably a lot later than some people. He was born on Veterans Day, November 11th, 1962, in Inglewood, California. He's 57, so an early happy birthday to uh, Mr. Snyder there. He uh, attended BYU, Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. He was a three-time All-American at BYU. In his first ever game at BYU, in his first three at-bats, he hit three home runs on three consecutive pitches. Reminds me of Reggie Jackson in the 1977 World Series. He was also a member of the uh, first U.S. Olympic baseball team in Los Angeles, which took the silver medal. He, they lost to uh, Japan in the gold medal game, 6-3. to 
His baseball career went from 1986 to 94, hit 247 with 149 homers, 488 runs batted in. Played for the Cleveland Indians for a por- good portion of his career, then with the White Sox, the Blue Jays, the Giants, and finishing up with the Dodgers. He would eventually manage in places like Taiwan and Mexico and coached for the Mariners AAA team as well. There was a film made about Corey Snyder's daughter, Amber Lee. It was called Walk, Ride, Rodeo. It was a journey of her uh, trying to get back to professional barrel racing. Didn't know they had that. After a car accident had left her paralyzed from the waist down. So that was a movie about his daughter there. And again, this was uh, no fee. So I think he sent the extra one because I had three holders. Or maybe I did send it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I did send that one out if I look at it. There's extra holders. So so be it. Sorry about that. But again, he signed the... This is the card I wanted the most. Signed the Olympic team. Came out nice. And then he signed the... uh, Again, the score. I did send him this one, so I apologize. He uh, tops there. And this top. So 4-4. Pretty nice. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. And the last one keeps my ball streak going. Yes. This came from Massachusetts. Took 10 days. I donated, contributed, whatever you want to call it, put in $5 for this, but it was well worth it. It's Mr. Jim Lonborg. I already have a long Jim Lonborg ball sign that says 1967 Cy Young. So I wanted something else. I got 1967 AL Champs. Uh, I asked him to inscribe that, and he was nice enough to put it on the ball. So for $5, that was a great bargain. Uh, James Reynolds Lonborg, Jim, born April 16th, 1942, in Santa Monica, California. 78 years old. Went to San Luis Obispo High School and graduated from Stanford University. He was signed by the Boston Red Sox in 1963. His career would go from 1965 to 69. He played with the Boston Red Sox for the bulk of it from 65 to 71. Then with the Brewers, the Phillies to uh, finish up his career. Never won a World Series, but played in the 1967 World Series, the impossible dream year for the Red Sox, where they lost to St. Louis in seven games. And then in 1976, 77, and 78, was a member of the three Phillies teams that went to the uh, National League Championship Series, where they lost to the Reds in 76, and then the Dodgers in 77 and 78. Uh, He was an All-Star in 1967, Led the American League in wins and strikeouts in 1967 and was Cy Young Award winner in 1967 as well. He That year, uh, he had a really good season. Won 20, uh, excuse me, get my head in the game here. Had a good 1968 season, 67 season and really helped the Red Sox get into the postseason That year was a tight race, real tight in the American League. Remember, there was just the American and National Leagues. There was no, uh, you know, wild cards and all these playoff games that they uh, they had, not like they do now. He had 157 career wins, 1,475 strikeouts, 3.86 ERA, 90 complete games, and 15 shutouts. He was the first Red Sox to actually win. The, uh, the Cy Young Award, long before Roger Clemens ever came around. And uh, as a member of the Boston Red Sox Hall of Fame. And after he, gradu- after he finished his baseball career, he went to Tufts University School of Dental Medicine, where he graduated in 1983 and was a working dentist until 2017 when he finally retired. Uh, he injured his knee shortly after the World Series had ended in December 1967 while skiing. And his career was never the same uh, after that. Allegedly, I don't know if this is true, but supposedly he was uh, chasing actress Jill St. John down the ski slopes when he injured his knee. So that's the rumor. I don't know if it's true. And if you ever watch the show Cheers, there's a picture above the bar for Sam Mayday Malone, played by Ted Danson. That picture is supposed to be Sam Malone, but it's actually a picture of Jim Lonborg, and Sam Malone's character actually wore the same number as Jim Lonborg did, so little useless trivia for you there. But again, Jim Lonborg, 
and that was five dollars to uh, donate well worth it all right so I've been telling folks in the last couple of videos about the holiday giveaway the Christmas giveaway I've shown a ball signed by George Foster a photo signed by Ralph Sampson another thing that I'm going to um, throw in there as part of the gift uh, package to someone not everybody's gonna win all of it I'm gonna divide them up to different people who enter it is a box here of Bowman 2020 platinum I think it is yes found that at the local Walmart for the first time I really thought it was Christmas because I hadn't seen cards and so long so I picked this up and uh, I'm gonna donate it to the holiday giveaway it's like 40 something dollars there but not bad I guess and also I'm going to throw in the holiday giveaway I got four packs of uh, Topps 1986 cards what I'm gonna do is open two of them and then I'll put two in to the giveaway uh, I got some other cards coming as well that are unopened so I'll throw some of those in so I'm gonna keep adding on as much as I can and this one has run too long I apologize for that I want to thank everybody for watching and staying this late appreciate it if you're not a subscriber you know please hit the subscribe button if you liked it even if you didn't like it hit the subscribe button anyway maybe we'll have something you like and uh, please leave a comment always try to respond to everybody I'll get back to you thanks again and tonight say good night to state of Maine